Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got the Masters Champion, D-Ron Booker, and also the defending doubles champion for the Open Championships. And we are here in Las Vegas, and uh, we're actually bowling the Open Championships. We are, um, we are gonna be showing you guys what the Rotogrip XL is in D-Ron's eyes. but I hope you guys can hear me showing off the new XL. Really enjoying it. I like that I can open up the lane a little bit with it. Here, differential bowling balls is you need to make sure they see enough of the lane to get into a roll properly. So I'm still barely getting it right now, so I'm gonna go a little bit softer with the next one. Remember D-Ron, just a little bit softer. It went through, all right, that was awesome. That was really good. That last shot was good, so let's see if we can uh, get close. I always talk about just getting close. I won't be able to throw it as good as I did last time, but I just wanna get close. Very, very close. For some of these shots, it seems like I keep wrapping 10. And the reason why the ball is wrapping 10 is because it's staying in the roll phase a little bit too long. Sorry, the hook phase a little bit too long. So I just need the ball to get into a roll a little bit sooner. Come on, make it. All right, so that was good. Again, with the bowling ball that has so much differential, I have to give it as much lane as I can to get the ball to the spot, get it get into a roll, and to go through the pins the correct way. The flat tens, I just get a little bit fast with it, maybe create a little bit more action rotation. The ball doesn't finish as much, but, you know, again, this wouldn't be the ball that I will ideally throw in this situation right now. But I'm gonna keep throwing it because uh, that's what you guys wanna see. You guys wanna see this reaction. See, every shot is barely getting the 10 out. Talking about how the lower differential balls get into, get into a roll a little bit sooner. So I switched to an IQ Tour just to kind of show you the look of an IQ Tour in comparison to the XL and why I'll be throwing the IQ over the XL in this moment. I mean, it still got the 10 out late. But you can see that it gets into a roll just a little bit sooner. And that's what something that I would use. I'm trying not to cover as many boards. The IQ doesn't cover a lot of boards. And because there's a lot more oil on the lane, I want to cover less boards. And that's kind of why I would make the switch to an IQ tour at that time. I'll do it one more time to show. I always say, let's do it twice and make sure it's not a fluke. Way that way. Way that way. So, okay. Let's get back to the XL. That's the reason why I'd be throwing an IQ Tour in that moment, which is what I discussed a little bit. Uh, it's because I think want to get in a little bit sooner. And for me, the XL likes to get down lane a little bit further before it makes it move. And I got to cover some more boards. That was good. That was a good one. Make it back. Oh. All right. So, 
in the middle of doing all the reviews right now. I'm showing the Excel and how the Excel wouldn't be my ideal bowling ball to use at this time. But I wanted to show a little bit with the IQ and how the IQ will allow me to be able to trust it a little bit more to the right, knowing that it's gonna get into roll a little bit sooner because the diff is a little bit lower. With the higher diff bowling ball and there's not enough friction down lane in a certain spot where I want it to go, makes it a little bit tough to see the Excel really read off that spot and slow down and not want to keep on going. Because again, with the higher diff bowling ball, you really want that ball to see the friction, blend it out, and still roll forward. On some of the shots, it's coming up a little bit high, tries to force me to open up my angles a little bit too much, and then I start getting this, what they call an over and under reaction. So it's pretty nice to see the over under reaction with the bowling ball. And again, it's not the bowling ball. It's how you're viewing the lanes and what you're seeing, because this ball will come into play. So I'll make some better shots, score up a little bit more, see a little bit more of the friction, and then uh, we'll see how the, the ball goes from that point. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create some straighter angles and a little bit more ball speed to help with that over under reaction. Not bad. Kind of slipped a little bit. Again, you can still see that the ball is really wanting to pick up. You see that I'm trying to keep my angles a little bit straighter, just because I know that if I see a little bit of friction, if I see the friction a little bit more, it'll help the ball slow down and get into a roll a little bit sooner. Again, these are things that I'm looking for uh, when I'm looking at bowling ball reactions and, and uh, what can be the best tool that's going to give me nine fair on my board shots. That's that's kind of how we look at it. We'll talk about it. So again, when it comes to bowling balls, you create a game plan, you can use any bowling ball at any time. You can see that I'm about 10 boards right, and the ball now looks a lot better than when I was a little bit left and slower. Again, it's all about game plan. It's all about the type of bowling balls you use, and it all depends on what it is that you want to see. So now, I'm thinking to myself, man, that's how I should have started with that ball, being a little bit firmer to the right, and then started slowly migrating to the left. But again, I wanted to show how much the hook potential of the bowling ball really is here over at South Point Bowling, uh, so, so, I'm sorry, the South Point Bowling at Center, I guess, because I know that there's a plaza, so this is the South Point Bowling Center. Uh, but I was able to move a little bit further to the right, be a little bit firmer with it, and now you can see that the reaction of the ball is uh, it's a little bit different, a little bit more controlled, just because, again, I'm seeing a little bit more friction, throwing a little bit firmer, and helping the ball stay online a little bit more. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. I got a messenger. I got one. I got one. And then, so what I'm going to do now, that one again was still me a little bit further to the right and firmer. I'll get for a, for a shot or two, a little bit further to the left, a little bit slower and see if I can get the ball to the same spot. And I did it. I did it. <laughs> All right. So everybody, that is the new Excel. You can see that uh, you can be in a comfortable spot around 25, getting into the range finder. You can jump another 10 or 15 left, slow it down, get into that spot, and the ball still makes it back. So I like it. I think it's pretty good. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about in a little bit of a more quiet setting on uh, how this ball is going to compare to some of the next balls in Storm Flying. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Well, everybody, this is a great view uh, and we wanted to do something a little bit different so we can kind of sit and talk about it. Uh, when I shot the video, it was a little loud and I want people to be able to understand exactly what I saw out of the bowling ball and uh, what's come, what's to come with it. I, I really think, think it's a good piece. I had a sale back in the day and I really loved it. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was such a cool bowling ball and I believe that's when Storm and Roto Grip kind of merged together and they started kind of mixing the two bowling balls up together. And uh, to be able to see it again with my skill being immensely better, it's <laughs> awesome. It's so, it's so cool. You know, sometimes you always talk about, I really wish I would have been able to throw that ball, you know, 15 years ago with what I know now. Yeah. And guess what? It you happened. can. So I mean, cool. I mean, you remember the original cell and the cell pearl, and they were such huge balls back then. They were. I mean, in my previous video, like I stated, the cell pearl, that was like my first ever YouTube video that I did. Yes. And. Man, I mean, to go like full circle, now it's 
they re-brought back the original cell with the newer latest technology in the AI core, newer cover stock. I mm -hmm. mean, I mean, it, yes, you're absolutely right with that statement. Um, you nostalgic. Know, nostalgic, that's a good way to put it, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, you know, we talk about it because they have to sell, sell per, sell pearl, I'm sorry, mutant cell, mutant cell pearl. They had the rogue cell, they had all these different cells. And like I said, at the time I was, I couldn't, probably 17, 18 years old and I was still developing into my game. Yeah. And so to talk a little bit more about the cell and the new AI technology. So we just came from Denver and I wanted to ask a little bit of a question on what is the AI core and why did they do it? And a lot of times we don't understand exactly why they do it. So when you have everybody that designs the bowling balls, we have everyone who has, you know, they put all their efforts and R and D into it. We want to ask them. Mm -hmm. And so when I asked them, I said, why did we go with the AI core technology? Because this new cell has it as well. And they told me, well, in 16, 15 and 14 pounds, we want to try to keep the numbers as close as we possibly can. So with that new AI core technology, they changed the densities in that part of the filler to make the bowling balls numbers be a little bit closer. So the 16 pound, 15 pound and 14 pound will give you a similar reaction because like they told me back in the day, a 16 pound ball will, will react completely different than it's a 14. It's almost like a different bowling ball. It's a completely different bowling ball, exactly. And so even on the national tour within the last you know, five years, guys wanted to see a certain reaction out of a ball, so they would drill a 14 or a 16 while they're th using their equipment, which again, these are all tricks of the trade that these guys are doing, which I didn't even know. Yeah. So the AI core technology keeps the bowling balls between weights a little bit simpler. I'm sorry. It keeps the bowling balls closer together, numbers wise, when it comes to RGs, differentials, and PSA or the intermediate differentials is what it does. Yeah, and um, I also had that question because I was always like, man, why is they coming out with so much AI core technology? And that, you know, that also answers my question. So, you know, for you viewers at home, that's a great piece of information because, you know, you guys were throwing either 14, some, most of the common 15 or even, you know, the 16 pounders, you were seeing different reactions versus when I throw 15 and, you know, you threw a 14. Um, they would be a little bit different, but with the AI core, like Dioran was explaining, you're gonna see a much more similar ball motion. Yeah, exactly. And so now we can touch on the cell a little bit. Um, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to bowling, we're never throwing it 100%. When I made the video, I really wasn't throwing it the best of my ability, but that's always a good thing. Because you see these guys and it's strike after strike after strike and you're like, okay, well, what happens if they're maybe not on their A game? And coming from Bowl Expo, not really throwing very many shots and shooting the video, you can see that even with some of the misses, the ball was still coming back and getting me nine. Yeah. You know, and that's another big thing. When you're bowling, the object is to get nine if you're not striking. And if you feel like you're not throwing it very well, the ball got me nine. Yeah. The ball literally got me nine almost every time. And so I'm like, okay, you know what? If I'm only feeling like I'm bowling at, you know, 70%, let's wish if we want to use percentages, the ball still made me feel like I was throwing it at like 90 or 95%. And I thought that was remarkable uh, with the ball. And so what we what I found out was we were bowling on a fresh house shot over at South Point. And if anybody comes to South Point, depending on where you're coming from across the country, when you're bowling in Vegas, sometimes the lanes seem like they are pretty slick. And the ball definitely was uh, you know, it was touchy. It was definitely touchy because of the fresh, the fresh surface on it. Yeah, I saw when you were throwing shots, it looked uh, pretty responsive. Yeah. It just went, as soon as it hit that drive, just like boom. And for the reviewers at home, that doesn't translate to be like, oh, the lanes are dry. That just means that the ball is storing up a lot of energy. Yes, exactly. So the ball was storing up a lot of energy. And for me, with my slower ball speed, I'm like, well, if the ball is storing up more energy, then maybe I can try to move left and get it to the friction a little bit later so the ball can blend itself out. Mm -hmm. And so within the video, I showed me left, and then I was like, you know what? Let me show you guys what I would do. So I played with the IQ Tour by saying, this is kind of the reaction I would use in this ideal situation. Because sometimes we're taking a look at it, and you're like, okay, well, would he really be throwing that ball at <laughs> this time? Yeah. And it's like, well, no. Yeah. But for video's sake, I'm gonna show you guys exactly the difference between the IQ Tour and the Cell, being two completely different bowling balls, one being at a differential of 0.056 being the Excel, and then the other one with an IQ Tour being 0.29. Yeah. And if you take a look at the shapes, you're like, wow, 
a .029 diff bowling ball is really shaping like a .056. Yep. With a little bit of hand manipulation, which I don't really do too much, but I mostly mess with my ball speed. And so using the XL, I had to be a little bit slower and getting the ball to shape more. Whereas with the IQ Tour, I could be a little bit firmer and more direct to the spot. And then I show the versatility of the ball doing exactly what I was doing with the IQ Tour with the XL. Yep. And I could definitely see the motions, the distinct motions between when you're throwing the XL and the IQ Tour. Uh, I remember you saying like, oh, I think I need to go to the IQ Tour right now because my XL, I just, you know, I just can't control it off of the break point. Yeah. And I need, and I need to be able to control that shape better, which is why you were explaining the, the shape of the IQ Tour when you switched into it. Yeah, it exactly. Just, that's, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And it definitely matched up a little bit better for you um, at that, at that time. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. But because everyone is here to see the Excel video, yes. I continued to throw the Excel. Yeah. And I felt like as I bowled and got some more reps in, the ball motion started looking better. And I would say too, when you're out there bowling in a tournament or bowling in league, and uh, you're, you, it's that, well, how many minutes do you normally get in like, you know, like 10 minutes eight, of practice, eight to 10 eight minutes. To 10 minutes yeah. But you're also bowling with four on a pair or five on a pair. Yeah. But in those shots, you definitely want to use that bowling ball and play different zones on the lane. Because yes, this might be your most aggressive bowling ball that allows you to move a little bit further left, but you never know, the ball could work really well playing five or 10 boards right of where you would normally stand with it. Yeah. And so when it comes to looking at these bowling balls, choosing your balls, how to play the lanes, what to do, that is exactly what it is that you wanna do. You wanna be able to say, okay, let me try this ball from right, let me try it from my most comfortable spot, and let me try it from left in practice, because again, it's practice. And you wanna to try to get yourself as lined up as possible. And just again, because the ball did not work at that time, it doesn't mean the ball doesn't work. It just has a, a specific, specific time purpose. when it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and uh, for the XL, um, I could see that ball working more for you um, when you feel like there's more of a puddle. Do, do you agree or disagree? Yeah, uh, when there's more of a puddle, I can see myself being a little bit more direct to my spot on the lane. Okay. More direct to the break point. Um, but again, when we're talking about developing a bag and developing an arsenal and using these as tools, I drilled a harsh reality solid to fit that slot. Got it. So if there is more oil on the lane in the middle, that puddle that we talk about, that's why I have the harsh reality solid. The harsh reality solid really, I mean, digs, digs in that spot on the lane, and then I can go to an XL or something else after that. So if I needed to be able to do that, I would. But because I designed my bag to have certain bowling balls to do certain things, the harsh reality solid will fit that slot. The XL will fit that slot after or before, depending on what we're bowling and depending on what we're doing. So for the viewers at home, um, would you say that um, the XL kind of fills the gap along the lines of like a, say a DNA coil or harsh reality pearl, but just in a solid form or where would you rank that? I would say yes. <laughs> I would say uh, yes to all of the above. Um, because again, it just depends on what it is that you wanna see and how you wanna see it. So for me, and again, I always like using these videos on my perspective and not on anyone else's. If I were to use an Excel, it would be after a harsh reality but before an attention star and before a DNA coil. Awesome. Because my attention star is for when I have to get a little bit further left and the mid part of the lane is starting to read a little bit more and I know that the attention star is gonna get through it. The DNA coil is again, kind of fits within that spot depending on what it is because I can have them drilled the same but it's gonna be a different look and I'm using it at a different time. So it just varies on what it is that I see, where we're bowling at in the country, if it's you know for nationals, if it's for league, or whatever it is that I'm gonna do. But I will tell you the Excel is definitely a very good ball down from the harsh reality, in my opinion, in my bag, and that's where I have it sitting. So if I were to play out a perfect scenario where, which, where we were just bowling, and if I was bowling league, it would be, okay, I'll start off with an IQ tour, and this is gonna sound crazy, you guys. It would be an IQ Tour to a Harsh Reality to an Excel if I were to have those three bowling balls. That's kind of how it would be. And you're like, well, but the IQ Tours, will, but you know, we've already talked about the lower differential bowling balls getting into a roll a little bit sooner. So I'll be playing the lanes further right, watching the ball get into a roll a little bit sooner. 
and then I would go into a harsh because when we move left, we're moving into the puddle. Yep. And then after everybody keeps beating up the puddle for about a game and a half to two games, then I can go further left and throw an Excel. So that's kind of how the ball will sit in my bag. It would actually be like a game three bag in league where I can get left, be a little bit softer with it, and just get it to that same spot because that cover is a little bit cleaner than the harsh. Yeah, um, I also feel like that XL, I can really just, you know, when, like you said, when the fronts are beat up, I can get a little bit left, move into the oil, still use that big differential, yes. get it to the spot to the right and not have to worry about it just, you know, hooking and bailing it actually will store up energy and come off of that spot yeah and that's and i i feel like you kind of see the same thing oh 100 i see the same thing we throw it similar when it comes to being a high track player and being a high track player we got to make sure that we get these balls getting started as soon as we can because of our track diameter uh, our track diameter is a little bit higher so using a ball with a lot more differential it's going to take it a little bit longer to get into that roll phase but we use bigger bowling balls into the puddle a little bit slower and it helps to get into that roll face to help it uh, have maximum carry is the best way to put it. Yep. All right, so with the Excel, you know, what I wanna do is I wanna teach more information about how these bowling balls work. So comment below on any information or any questions that you would have on why I use certain bowling balls the way they were, how differentials work, how RGs work, how layouts work, anything that you have that I can use to refer you to my game we can definitely answer that for you. And yeah, we'll drop new videos with D-Run to answer those questions. So don't forget, just please comment down below. And if you want to see more content with me or with D-Run involved in it, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, guys, yes. we're, we're so close to 10,000 subscribers. Um, we're just over that 5,000 threshold and we'll be giving away a bowling ball at 10,000 subscribers. But I'm going to throw in a new twist. How about we give away a bowling ball that is signed by, by you. By myself. I think that would be a fantastic idea. Let's do that. So guys, make sure to tell your friends to subscribe to Tajiri's Ball Reviews and thank you again, D-Ron. Always a pleasure. Hey, I got this view. This is a great thing. Thank it's you great so much. View. Peace from Vegas. We got, we got.